Our next guest is another one of the all-time greats, an Emmy, Tony, and Golden Globe winning former cab driver who at 87 years old plays Steven Spielberg's Uncle Boris in The Fablemans. Like me, like you, I think. We're junkies, and art is our drug. Family, we love, but art, we're my sugar for art. You think I wanted to leave my sisters, my mama, and my papa and go stick my stupid head in the mouth of lions? Putting your head in a lion's mouth is art? <laughs> no, sticking your head in the mouth of lions was balls. Making sure the lion don't eat my head, that is art. The Fable Men's is in theaters now. Please welcome Judd Hirsch. Ah, uh, wow! What a thrill it is you. to have thought, you here. I, I thought you had a thousand people in an audience. <laughs> no, not quite a thousand. It's, it sounds uh, a lot. Like we that. we asked a thousand to come, but only 150 showed up. <laughs> but I, I usually play for a thousand. <laughs> I know you do, yeah. but this is my deal. You're at, well. First of all, it's great to have you here. Thank I got you. to meet you at a party about a month ago, and. Uh, I kind of cornered you and talked your ear off and asked you if you would come on the show, and yeah. here you are. And I, and said, I said, don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, something like, well, you have to anyway. Yeah, I said, listen, right. The Fablemans, I know this movie's going to get nominated for things. You're going to be expected to be out there. You, won a gold, you guys won a Golden Globe for Best uh, Drama. Yeah, it was an Tuesday night. How did you uh, wind up in the Fablemans? Is this, did you know Steven Spielberg previously? Did he have no, you in mind no, for no, his no. uncle? I told, I told him this story because it was true, but he didn't remember, he, he wouldn't have remembered it. I was like some schlub off the street and, they, and somebody from uh, Universal somehow. I when know, was this? How long ago were we talking? 73. Here? 1973, okay, yeah. wow. He told me off the street and they said, would you like to read for this movie? And I had no idea, I'd never been to Hollywood. I had never been on television and it was the lead in a television movie, a two and a half hour a television movie called The Law, believe it, it won the Emmy. Wow. <laughs> None of this was in my vision. Uh -huh. They came out, I just read the script, to, you know, it was like a, like a big Bible tome. It was, and, they, and it was Eleanor Kilgallen, and she said, uh, what do you think, you think you're him? And I went, uh, you know, I didn't read the whole thing. <laughs> I, said, I said, they just wanted some, I don't know, Fast talking Jewish guy from New York. That's what they want. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, yeah, sure. She said, okay, let me, let me introduce you to people in the office. So she walks me around the office, this is so and so, so and so, and so and so, and said, there's a little guy sitting behind a desk with a, uh, a script on the desk. And she said, this is uh, Steven Spielberg. He's going to be very big. 50 years ago, this was, wow. right? At least 50, right? And so I said, oh, okay. And then I went, Got the part. Wow. Started my career. And totally. what was the script he had sitting on his desk? Uh, uh, Jaws. And, and I reminded him about that, and he said it was exactly the time he, 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 uh, he, had, he was working on Jaws. Little guy, he's 24 years old. Wow. 26 years old, you know? Wow. I'm older than him. And then that movie Jaws, did that get made? I assume that... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he probably had. <laughs> and he so said, he, yeah, he said it was the worst time in his life. He phones you and he says, uh, "I'd like you to play my uncle." Did he tell you about no, his I uncle? I just get this phone call. I didn't know who the hell it was. It's so it's so it's like S S wants to talk to J H. My, my agent said, "I said, well, who the hell is that?" Sally said, Struthers. <laughs> Sammy Siebel. It could be anybody, right? <laughs> I said, I don't know any SSs. Who the hell is this? Why is it so secret? I, I said, it's not the SS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. You don't want it to be the <laughs> SS, no. <laughs> I immediately thought, I didn't pay my taxes. <laughs> so, okay, so they said, uh, no, it, I think it's Steven Spielberg. I said, so what? What's, this, what's the secret here? He said, I don't know. Just pick it up and like, I think it was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I said, okay, okay. Now, this was like an hour before. All right, I forgot the time. Oh. I'm walking around, and all of a sudden I said, oh, crap, SS wants to talk to me. Okay, turn it on. And there's this guy sitting there, he's going like this. On the Zoom waiting for you? Waiting for me. Oh, right. wow. So I said, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I said, you're Steven Spielberg. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you ever identify somebody you said to themselves? You know? You know? You probably get that a lot, I bet. A lot. Yeah, yeah sure. And, I, and they get their name wrong. Oh, do they really? They what do they call get you? Their name. Oh, God. It was this. I was in a department store one time in, in, in New York, and this woman walks up to me, and she says, Ho! You're him! <laughs> and I said, Whoa! And she goes, Wait! Hilda! It's him! <laughs> so Hilda has to come down from a long way. She goes, Oh, wait, 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 wait! Hilda, look! It's him! And so Hilda says, Yeah! Yeah! And she, said, and she says, Who are you? And I said, Judd Hurst. She said, No, that's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> from, <laughs> from that moment on, from that moment on, I had to make up people. <laughs> I, had to, I had to start guessing who I might be. <laughs> you, uh, I hope you're not tired of talking about this because Taxi for me is one of the greatest shows of all time. <laughs> one of, not just one of the greatest shows of all time, one of the greatest casts yeah. of all time. So we got, so we got canceled after four years on. Unbelievable ABC, that that show ABC. would get canceled. But um, look at this. Look at this. Christopher Lloyd, Andy Kaufman, Tony Danza, Mary Lou Henner, you, and of course Danny DeVito, who's ha is going to be here on Monday. Is he really? Yeah, he's going to be with us on Monday. Oh, you have look out! Anything you'd like me to pass along? No, if he doesn't like something, he throws it in the garbage. Is that true? Well, that's what he did with the first script in Taxi. He didn't like it. No, he walked in. He said, "Who?" Wrote this. All right. You know, every, yes. Throws he, it across the room. That was his audition. Did you know Danny before Taxi? Well, you're not going to believe this. But he played my dog. <laughs> he played your dog? Really? We in what? In, well, we were in a play. It was the first rock musical, by the way. Wow. And we were in Philadelphia. It was written by a woman who had been a playwright, painter, Novelist, wrestler. Wow. She had written some off-Broadway plays. This was one. The line of least existence. Look it up. It probably doesn't exist anymore. I'm telling you. <laughs> but you won't see something like... And we both had songs. So and Danny he, had a song as yeah, a we, dog? We, we, it, was set, it was set up like a, like a disco. And, oh, it's, it's maniacal. I'm, I'm, I'm Groucho Marx, and he's my dog. Uh-huh. And he has a song. I think it was like, I'm no mutt. In a rut. I'm just a mutt in a rut, but I've seen a few things in my time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and how seriously did he take and it? I had a song called, it was a belt song. I was like, women, women, women. That was all. That was all the, that was all the lyrics I got. Women, women, women. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the audience See, would come up and dance on stage. It was, it was dopey time. You guys wind up on this show together. And uh, Jim Burroughs was here, and I read his book, and he writes about these oh. parties you guys would have after the show uh, once a week. And yeah. it would, not only would be your cast, but cast from all the shows shooting on well, the lot. Well, on Paramount, everybody, we were all, in all the shows that were on the same night. Right. You know, French yeah. Company, uh, uh, Happy Walking Days, Mindy. Laverne and Shirley, and so all I, those we shows. We knew everybody. They, we'd, we'd visit each other on our sets. You know, Robin Williams would come over once in a while. I remember the first time I met Robin, I said, So, you're English. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a Shakespearean actor. Uh, well, really? Remember how he spoke? <laughs> he spoke like that. Uh huh. Why? I don't know. Yeah, he did have a. I just don't think he actually wanted to be himself. I think he wanted to be somebody else. Maybe you're right. I think you're probably right about that. Yeah. I did. I came, I was, I was one of those kids that was brought up like, uh, if the word crap can be written out, each of those letters would describe part of my life. In what way? Well, it would be like, you know, I, well, I, was, I was like three, four, five years old. I was living in Coney Island. Mm -hmm. right? Wow, really? For a kid uh -huh. who was, whose introduction to life is fiction. I mean, what? I, I, I didn't live in real places. Yeah. You know? I would be there, there would be, there's five roller coasters, there's the parachute jump, there's Luna Park, there's steeplechase. And the only thing you knew was everything is fake. Everything, and by the way, it had all to do with fear. I mean, if you go into one of these places, they had, they had a little short person. They had the freak show at the Coney Island. Right. Yeah. But it was in the amusement park. So if you wanted to walk into the amusement park, there was a rolling barrel you had to walk through. And there was a little guy. You couldn't see him. He had a little electric wand. <laughs> you, you started to walk in. He jabbed you with this electric wand. This was and Danny I, DeVito? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did 
Do you uh, remember? Did you I'm go to in those? Trouble. Danny's gonna kick. The did you go to those shows? Those, um, those, as they called them, freak shows at the time with the world's hairiest woman and the. Oh yeah, you couldn't help it. You walked down the street and they had the barkers, you know. For, yeah. You know, I mean, you see on the inside, you got to see this elephant lady. Her her mother was hit by an elephant. She's got a nose like this. Because her mother was hit by an elephant? <laughs> <laughs> That's, wow, what a coincidence, um, you know? She got infected with the trunk virus or something. I'm telling yeah. you, it was, uh, to start life in fiction was to mean that my real life was already traded. You know, I didn't have one. I didn't have one yet, right? Because we moved so many times. We moved like 12 times before I was in third grade. And by the time we ended up in the Bronx, uh, I, 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 I was still looking back at that time because I went to kindergarten in Coney Island. I went to first grade in the Bronx, went to second grade in another school in the Bronx, went to third grade in another school in the Bronx. Then I went to junior high school. By the way, that's where I got my name on taxi. Um, Alex Rieger? Yeah, they started with, uh, the first day I remember I, I opened, the, opened the book and I said, oh, it says Alex Taylor. So they said, okay, let's start. I said, whoop. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I can't play that name. <laughs> As if I was crazy, you know, they said, oh, what name can you play? And I had to think it up. In five seconds, I thought of the funniest guy that I met in junior high school. That's all. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he is. He might not even be here anymore. But we were the two funniest guys in junior high school. His don't last name was Rieger? Huh? His last name, His was, name Rieger? was Rieger. Uh -huh. And I remember the way he spelt it. So I said, uh, just make it Rieger. It sounds like German Jewish, right? Or at least German. I didn't wow. want to be pinholed as just... Yeah. You know, Taylor to me was like. I can't imagine like. Uh, I didn't want to play a guy like this. <laughs> Louis De Palma saying, Taylor, you know, it just doesn't right, work. No, so Riga. He, yeah, oh, he, right. He, he loved it. As yeah. soon as I said the name, you could hear him going, Riga, Riga. <laughs> <laughs> Judd Hirsch, everybody, the favorite man. <laughs> Thank you, Judd. We'll be back with Chase Rice.